When it comes to heresy, you must discern based on the word of God, not by the standards of men. Even among people who profess to believe in God are those who assert that someone is heretical or wrong if they see him not in accordance with their teaching or theory. They do that according to the standards of their own. Then, what are the standards of heresy presented in the Bible? They are well explained in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1-3. through 3. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the Master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. The most obvious standard to discern heresy is whether someone denies the Lord who bought him. The only one who can save us from eternal punishment of death is Jesus Christ. Since Jesus cleansed us from our sins with His precious blood and led us to salvation, all the saved children of God have been bought by Him with His blood. And denying this Lord who has brought us with His blood is heresy. Therefore, before Jesus fulfilled His ministry as the Christ through the crucifixion and resurrection, there was no need for terms like heresy. Jesus signifies the one who will save His people from their sins, and the Christ, the Anointed One. Only after Jesus was crucified and resurrected did He complete His ministry as the Christ and become our Savior. For this reason, denying of the Lord was constituted from that point. When we say the Lord, we mean Jesus Christ, not Jesus. We mean Jesus Christ. I want you to know this clearly. So, in the Bible, we find that people prayed in the name of Jesus Christ, whether it was Apostle Peter or Apostle Paul. Specifically, Paul often mentioned our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. He added emphasis. Jesus Christ and the Lord are the same. But he often said, Our Lord Jesus Christ, adding emphasis. So people made sure to add Christ to the name. If you take a closer look at the parts where the word Christ is missing, you find that they refer to our Jesus before the crucifixion. Therefore, the denying of the Lord was constituted from that point. Namely, only after Jesus resurrected and completed His ministry as a Christ, there appeared people who denied Jesus Christ who bought them. This is how heresy emerged. This is why nowhere in the Old Testament or the four Gospels in the New Testament can we find the word heresy. The Jews called Apostle Paul a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. In using the word sect, they didn't mean that Paul denied the Lord who bought him because Christianity was a different teaching from the perspective of Judaism, they used the word sect. A dictionary defines a sect or a cult as a religious group with ideology and practices that are at variance or different. But this is merely a physical definition. If we were to follow that definition, anyone with a religion would see other religions, except his own, as heretical. Then, Christians would see all other religions like Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, etc. to be heretical. The same would go for Buddhists. But heresy we are now discussing is the one defined in the boundary of Christianity. If Christians are to decide someone is heretical, they must make sure to do that according to the biblical standards and check whether he is denying the Lord who bought him. However, the closer we get to the end, 
the more are their heresies denying the Lord who bought us. They pretend like they were the Savior and teach people that they can be saved through them. They delude others into thinking that they can reach salvation by some other name, not by the name of Jesus Christ. But with the passing of time, they reveal their true identity. They pursue sensuality and malign the way of the truth. Out of greed, they increase their riches through their followers and serve their own interest. In addition, they lead others to practice many lawless deeds going against the word of God, the truth. However, keep in mind that just because some people do many lawless things going against the truth doesn't mean you can just judge them heretical unconditionally. Of course, it's necessary that we rebuke and admonish them so that they can repent, turn from lawlessness, and promptly return to the truth. But even if they practice lawlessness that goes against the truth, as long as they don't deny Jesus Christ, our Lord, who brought us by His blood, then we must never judge them to be heretical. In Acts chapter 5, verses 35 through 39, a teacher of the law named Gamaliel, who was highly regarded by the people of his time, warned those who judged and condemned Christianity. Men of Israel, take care what you propose to do with these men. For some time ago, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a group of about 400 men joined up with him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away some people after him. He too perished, and all those who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or action is of man, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them, or else you may even be found fighting against God. Therefore, we must keep in mind that it is only God who can judge.